Okay, let's uh, let me share my Okay. All right, let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer and we will begin our discussion and hopefully some people will join us. I know Bethany is coming soon, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace and just this new day. We thank you for bringing it to an, an, an end and we thank you for your guiding in our lives. We thank you for your protection. We just ask right now with this COVID situation that you would guide and direct. We ask that you would protect those involved. We ask for healing. We also ask for uh, a, a vaccine to be found and that this crisis would be brought to an end soon. We especially pray for those who have little tonight. We just ask that you provide for the, them who are in need. Father God, as we study your word tonight, may we just meditate upon the richness of your word and may we endeavor to pray more biblically may we pray more uh, genuinely and sincerely we want to worship you in our prayer and we want to we want to speak to you and we also want to hear your voice speak to us now as we contemplate these great things in jesus name our lord and savior we pray all these things amen okay so we lost Danny. <laughs> Hopefully he comes back. What I wanted to do tonight was just to finish. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm sad to see that Dexter isn't here and some of the, other, the others. But I want to finish Acts chapter 4. I want us to pick the different psalms that, that we're going to be working through. And then we can start, we can start Hannah's prayer in First uh, Samuel chapter two verses one to ten. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to some of the questions. I know that, I know that, uh, Ray, you had, you have your questions still, correct? So let, let let's go back and just review shortly, and just go over and deal with some of the questions that we have. So th this is our notes from. The past two sessions and um, let's correct me if I'm wrong we want we still have to answer the question concerning 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 this correct we, we had questions about this we had questions about the statement. I think that was your question, uh, Ray. And, and we had, so the questions that I had written down, and correct me if I'm wrong, and the question that you had is, what about the fairness? What about the fairness with Pilate and others? Was that your question or Dexter's? That, that was your question? Yeah, that was my question. Okay, okay, great. And uh, I do also want to just, I do want to touch on Psalm 2 a little more. Because this is really a foundational, a foundational psalm. So let's first answer this question. The question that, that is presented here is, what about the fairness to Pilate and others? Okay? And, and the, reason why, the reason why we're asking about the fairness is based upon, is based upon this statement here. Uh, um, to do whatever your hand and plan had predestined to take place, right? That, that's, that's, the, that's the difficulty, right? Um, so now did you do any research, Ray, or were you too busy to do research? Did you look at anything? I did some, well, I did some research before, but I just want to hear from what what you have to say. It's it's like the story. It's about I, it's like the same situation where Judas is yeah. or was rather. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
Yeah, so the same type of thing, because are you referring to John chapter 14, where Jesus says it would be better for him not to have been born, right? Okay, maybe let's, let's go there really quick. Let's go, let's, let's set the table here. Let's set the table here. Let's go quickly, because you're also thinking about that. Mark 14, 21. What is it, 14, 21? Mark 14, 21. Okay, um, can you read it, Henry? Uh, in, in the translation is God's word. It would be better, it's say, uh, in verse 21, the son of man is going to die as the scripture says he will, but how terrible it will be for that person who betrays the son of man. It would have been better for that person if, uh, if, if he had never been born. Okay. Okay. All right. So Mark 14. Yes. No, uh, fourteen twenty one. Okay, 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 good. Team, hey, so, hey, connect, connecting verse for that something like when Jesus, uh, when Judas asked Jesus if he was the one, and he said that, and Jesus said that, yeah, you go and do the thing you're supposed to do, something like that. Yes. So hold, hold on, just hold on one second. Okay. All right. No. So so it, there was two passages. So now I now I remember. It's been a while. So so. That is true. What, what Henry said is true. And so the question is, why would it be better for him not to have been born? And then when you look at John chapter 13, verse, verse number uh, 15, for I have given you just, I'm going to read 15 and following. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done. Truly I say to you, the servant is not greater than the master, nor is a messenger than the one who sent him. If you know these things, Blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. So it's not, it's, uh, Jesus has chosen them. They have not chosen him. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place that when it does take place you may believe that i am he okay and 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 the scripture being fulfilled isn't a, just a passive looking in the future the scripture is being filled up it's it's coming into reality okay and then coupling this so so judas was judas's betrayal was the, the fulfillment of scripture and then coupling coupling this passage with, with, with henry's passage it's quite clear that, that Judas, it would have been better for him not to have been born. It's, very, it's, a very, it's a very hard statement for us to accept. It's a very hard statement for us to accept, um, but it's true. So, so our job is not to question the word of God. Our job is to seek to really understand and, and to try to uh, synthesize, okay? Um, and so coming back to our passage, Coming back to our passage, um, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Okay, so again, um, um, it seems to be clear that that God is planning, God is ordaining it. Now, I have I have several passages of scripture for us to consider. These are similar passages, things that we can think about. Um, let's go first to, to Genesis 50, verse 20, okay? Let's go first to Genesis 50, verse 20. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Can everyone see this? Okay, so this is after what the, what the brothers had done to Joseph. They had, they had uh, captured him. They had put him in a pit. They were going to kill him, and then they decided to sell him into slavery into Egypt. And what they did was would have been a capital they they imprisoned a man and sold him that would have been a uh a, a, a capital offense in israel it would have been a very serious crime in israel i i don't want to misspeak but i believe you you could receive the, the death penalty for doing something like this i, I could be mistaken um, I think, i'm thinking off the top of my head um but but then what he says here joseph says so the brothers come and they they're begging for their lives and they're using their father as an example. They're asking for Joseph to pardon them. 
and they say, uh, verse 9, uh, 18, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? Question mark. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So what we see here in this, in this, in this example, the secret is somewhat open, right? Joseph doesn't say, this was all on you. This is your fault. You're done. You know, you're responsible for this. He doesn't place all the blame on them, nor does he say, this is just all God, and you're off the hook, right? He doesn't say this was God's predetermined plan. You had no, you couldn't have done anything else, right? What does he say? He says, and it's actually the exact same. It's actually the exact same Hebrew word. This Hebrew word is literally translated uh, "planned," "planned," <laughs> "planned," <laughs> "planned." Uh, you planned it for evil. God planned it for good. So. They are responsible for the crime, for the sin, and yet God, it wasn't that God just uh, permitted it and then just was like, okay, that's the plan, let's go with it. There are two things that are simultaneously happening here. Okay? This is the great mystery and the wisdom of God, okay? He works, he works, uh, let, let's go now to... Uh, uh, Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, verse 11. In him we have obtained inheritance, having been, this is the same word that we saw in Acts 4, predestined, predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things, all, all things according to the counsel of his will. Okay. It's the same word. It's the same word being used there as Acts 4. Whatever your plan predestined to take place. Okay? So God uses all means to bring about his will. Okay? And, 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 the, and the church confessions actually say that God ordains all things. And this is what it says here. It says that he has predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Okay? So this still is not answering your question, right? This is still not answering your question. I'm I'm still setting the table. Okay? I'm setting the table. Okay? Now, this is a huge debate. This is a huge debate and people would fall down on different sides. What one side will will say that uh, one side will say that God simply foreknows the future knows the future he then ordains the future okay so he looks down the quarters of time he he sees what will happen and he ordains it okay the other says that uh he foreknows because he ordains meaning to say the reason why he knows what the future is is because he ordains it you see the difference is everyone, is everyone tracking the difference here um uh, he he determines it, and, th and thus he foreknows it. Okay, all right. So so um, uh, let's let. Do you want to keep going here, or is this making enough sense? Do you want to go deeper? We can go. We can go deeper. It's it's really a vote to to all of you. Do you want to continue? Is that making sense? Do you want to continue, or where is everyone at? The wheels are turning. What do you want to do? I'm Ray. No, I, I, I was just wondering if at any point in time, if I'm destined to, to, to what do you call it, to this old God, then it's something bad to be worried about. <laughs> The, the, according, to, according to the example of Joseph, you're responsible, even though God's are dating. So, 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 so that's, that's why I want us to, that's one thing I really want us to see. We're, we're always responsible. 
we're, we're always responsible to obey the commands of God. We're always called to obey the commands of God, okay? But when we look, uh, Danny, go ahead. Just a question, like, what happened to Judas? So Judas' role was uh, the villain. Because we uh, of this, uh, uh, crucifixion of Jesus uh, uh, came about. It was no, uh, Judas did not betray Jesus. The uh, arrest and crucifixion of Jesus did not have uh, put through. So yeah. I know Judas was an accomplice to complete the uh, yeah. mission of Jesus. But pity on Judas because that was his role. Yeah, so, so, so Judas committed the sin. Judas is in hell receiving punishment for the sin, okay? Um, but but the, the, the great mystery is that while Judas is responsible, God is acting the one he has ordained the events before Judas has acted, okay? Um, so then maybe we should we should continue down this path. Now, now many people don't accept this. Many people do accept this. So this is like one of the biggest debates in theology, okay? You know, I'm not telling you, I'm offering you where, where I would where, where I would be, but like, this is really something that you have to study. So maybe you want to go to one or let's go to one or two more passages to, uh, to really bring everything to bear, okay? Let's go to um, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Now, we, we don't have time to read all of this. I'm just going to start in verse verse 10, okay? Verse 10. Uh, verse 10, okay? Now, when I read this, um, the first question I have is, is Jesus talking about, I mean, is Paul talking about individuals or or, or like people? Uh, is, uh, number one, and then, what what is what? Who is the one doing the action, and, and what is the what is the response being created by Paul? So he's explaining something, okay. And then there is a, a response to explanation, okay. So let, let me just read here, um, verse ten. And not only so, but also when Rebecca had conceived. By a child by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they had not yet been born and had done either good or bad. So the, the people that say, say God looked down the corridors of time and, and sees faith, sees good, sees bad, Paul, see, Paul is saying, no, before, before that, uh, before they had done good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue not because of works, but because of him who calls. So who's the one who calls? It's God. She was told, the older will serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. Okay? So that is incredibly strong, all right? Saying that at the end of the day, it's God's purpose and not what Esau did. Because they could say Esau was a profane man. That's why God chose Jacob. But it's saying, no, 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 before they had done anything, before, before, before Esau was profane, God had chose. It's, it had nothing to do with the works. It was God who caused, okay? Now watch, 14. What shall we say then? So, so Paul is expecting people to be very upset mm, by that. Yeah. So he says, yeah. what shall we say? Is there injustice on God's part? And this is exactly the question that Ray asked. How is it fair? Just a different way. How is it fair? Right? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. Uh, King James, may it never be. God forbid. God forbid. For he says to Moses, this is, this is quoting uh, uh, Exodus 34. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. 
So therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills, and he hardens whom he wills. Mm-hmm. When you go back and look in Exodus, when you're looking at the plagues, when you're actually looking at the different um, uh, the statements of, of Pharaoh's heart. Forgiving of the heart. Yeah. Sometimes God hardens Pharaoh's heart. Sometimes Pharaoh hardens Pharaoh's heart. And sometimes we don't know. It just says Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Okay? We're looking at all of those, how does Paul summarize it? Paul summarizes it by saying, he hardens whomever he wills. Mm-hmm. That, that's what the text says. So, so um, God is sovereign. So, God is sovereign. And, 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 and we have the example in the crucifixion. The crucifixion, whatever your hand had uh, pre, uh, your hand and plan had predestined to happen. Okay? Now watch this. Watch this. Let's finish here, okay? You will say to me, why does he still find fault? Raise, raise question. Why does he still find fault? Right? Who can resist yeah. his will? Now watch. Does Paul answer the question? His answer is, who are you, oh man, to ask the question? <laughs> he doesn't answer it. He says, can the molded say to the molder, why have you made me like this? That's it. Okay. And, and, and let me finish here. Uh, um, has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump a vessel of honorable use and another of dishonorable use? Okay. That's Paul's answer. You can't ask yes, that. So, so uh, verse 22 says, what if God, Paul is just offering a possibility, but, he, but he's not giving, he's like, what if God desires offering things, but it's not what, not what uh, Paul is saying. not what uh, God actually do what they do your hand. Andre is reading. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, sorry. I meet, I meet you, meet, meet. <laughs> um, but, but what, what I, what I, so, so, so people, so, so people who say that truth that remains is God is sovereign, God is ordains, and man is responsible. And we can't ask we can't reconcile the two that God has not revealed that to us. Okay. Uh, um, what he has revealed to us is, is every man is called to, is called to repent and believe and to obey him. Okay. And so, uh, uh, like what I've read, all our questions will be answered when we get there. Yes. 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 For uh, we have to simply trust, trust and obey. We cannot uh, even job. Uh, God did not answer the question of job. Why? Yeah. What happened to him? So, yeah, but but in Job there was something behind the scenes that we were not that we were not aware of, and and, and the, the same the same is here that there is that that God is ordaining all things, and yet we are responsible. Um, now now there is we can we don't have time to go on this, but, but there's people that come up with how the two can be reconcilable. Fair enough. Um, um, you know, but, but this is what the word of God says. I, I, I do want to read one other passage of, and this is a, this is of encouragement. Okay. This is of encouragement. Um, John, John six, uh, John six, the end of John six. John 6 also has very strong language that of, of God in control and, and God ordaining. The, the, the conclusion of John chapter 6, he's, he's, he's telling them that they have to eat his flesh, okay, and they have to drink his, his blood. And, and it's not literal, but he's saying that he is the one by which life will be. And, and um, uh, they, the, the Jews didn't like what he was saying. And verse 60 says, And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, 
this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, he said, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is no help at all. And so this is, this, this is coming into another truth that we can discuss later if we had a theology class. At the condition of man is that no one chooses God. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, everyone would be in hell. Okay? And there are two answers to, two answers to, uh, to the question of the working of the Holy Spirit in theology. Some people say that, that the Spirit gives every man the ability, and then some accept and some reject. And others says, no, the Spirit gives life to some. And then they, in their, of their own will, have faith, claim, and then they're, they're, um, um, they, they become children of God. So there's different answers here. But, but the truth of the matter is that it's the Spirit that gives life. Our own flesh is no help at all. Okay, And, and that's a theme throughout John, John's, uh, John's gospel. But watch this. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. Again, going back to this betrayal thing. And he said, this is why I told you. So this is, this, is another strong, this is another strong statement. This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is given to him by the Father. Verse 66. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the 12, they didn't like it. They didn't like it that Jesus was saying, this is outside of your control, okay? Um, uh, Do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There There are aspects and things that are too deep for us that finite creatures cannot understand. I would say this, I would say the sovereignty of God and human responsibility uh, is, is, is too deep for us to reconcile them both. And we can't say, no, it's only human responsibility. We can't say, no, it's only like a hyper, hyper position where it's only sovereignty of God. We say both are true, both are true, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And, and this is where faith, this is where faith, this is where faith comes in. Um, so, so Simon says, so let, let's finish here. Simon says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. So P- Peter takes credit. He says, he says, you have the words, we, we have believed. We have come to know that you are the one. And Jesus answered him, Did I choose you? <laughs> Do you see that? It's like he's trying to take credit and prop up his belief and, and, and that he is, they have found Jesus. And he says, Did I choose you, Peter? And one of you is a devil. And he spoke of Judas. Through the Gospel of John, God and Jesus, they are in complete control of the situation. If you study it, it it is so powerful. And um, that does not minimize, that does not minimize our call to the whole world proclaiming the gospel to every living creature. Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the savior of the world. Okay, that does not minimize that proclamation. Anyone who believes in their heart, repents of their sin and believes, will be saved. That is a true statement. If they believe, if you believe, if you repent and believe, you will be saved. Okay? Now, th- this, is, this is a deep, this is, a ver- this is very deep, okay? 
And I have been studying this for years upon years. I've lost sleep over this. So um, uh, I hope that you do the same. I hope you lose sleep. <laughs> no, we need to sleep. <laughs> no, no, because Henry wants to say something. Go ahead, Henry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is a Calvinism approach. Yes, yeah, so, so this would be more of a Calvinistic approach, yes. Yes. Right, yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a Calvinism approach that it is God, yes, it is God who chooses. No? It is well, God who chooses yeah. people to be saved or not, and we have no right to question God. Yeah, yeah. Ours is to just obey him. Yes, yes. For for Herod and Pontius Pilate, they are to obey God or they have. It's like it says here. Okay. Go ahead. God has given his people, God has given his people here in this world to be with him for eternity. God chooses his people to be with him in eternity. Yeah, yeah. That's for the good of the people. Yes, yeah. But people choose not to obey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People choose not to obey. Here, it's also predestined. People are predestined for God to, uh, to be with God. But people choose not to be in that line. Yeah. So, 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 so this is, and I, I, you're making a good distinction. So, so, whether you're a Calvinist or, I mean, the two sides are Calvinist or Arminian, and some people are in the middle, okay? But, so, so I appreciate what you're saying, Henry. So, so, so the, the issue is God chooses. That's what the word of God says. Well, mm -hmm. Another word is elect. Elect is from the Greek word, eklektomai, which literally means to, to choose, to elect. So, so we have to accept that God chooses, and then there's different ways of explaining how he chooses. Okay, so 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 people who say I don't believe in election, the Bible, it's like okay, then you don't believe in the Word of God because my Bible says He chooses. Okay, so so then uh, there's different reasons. There's different reasons. I have given you more of the uh, the I didn't want to use the word, um, but but Henry has pointed that out. Um, uh, this yeah, this in Acts chapter four, the book of Acts, it is it is. Uh, It's like a transition. It's like transition because this this is for the Jew. Yeah. I think this chapter four, the book of us, a book of Acts, especially on this subject on chapter four, yeah. it is for the Jew. Now, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the offer of Jesus Christ, it is after chapter four, where it is by grace, by faith through, uh, by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. So here it's different story. For our time, in our time, God wants us to be with Him through Jesus Christ. Yeah, that yeah. is, we are predestined to be with them. But it is up to us to accept Christ. Yeah, yeah. So here. In Pontius Pilate and Herod, they can, although it says predestined, but they can opt not to follow with the, uh, with the Israelites, with the Pharisees to yeah. condemn Jesus Christ. But they choose to follow yeah. with, the, with the mob. Yeah, so you have to you have to wrestle with that because because yeah, that would be one option. I mean, whatever your hand and plan predestined. So it, it seems as if it seems as if it has to happen. So, but it's some it's something to think about. It's something to think about. Um, um, yeah, I I would I would say I would say I would just say that. Um, uh, Everyone has to study this on their own, okay? Um, uh, everyone needs to study this on their own. There are there are di there are different levels of yeah. There's <laughs> there are different levels of there's like a spectrum, okay? There's a spectrum, and and there's there's moderate positions, far 
on either side is really outside the realm, is outside the realm of, of orthodoxy. There's, there's a middle ground where we would say that's a secondary issue. So this does not affect salvation. This does not affect a, a difference of opinion. This does not affect fellowship and, and, and partnership. And so provided you know, we, 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 we accept the sovereignty of God, you know, there's going to be some difference of interpretation. So, so, so fair enough. And, and I appreciate, I really appreciate Henry bringing that out. Looking at this passage, looking at some other passages, God being in complete control. Uh, this prayer was not, as I mentioned before, this was not meant the purpose of saying to do whatever your hand and plan pre predetermined to take place was, it was not a theological debate here. Paul was not arguing with them in, in Athens, right? This was a source of comfort, okay? And so God being in control is a source of comfort for his people. So I, I, don't, I don't want to get bogged down with what Ray's question, which the question needs to be asked. At the end of the day, I want to bring it back to that God is in control. God is in control, and maybe we see things slightly differently, but we need to emphasize the fact that he is the sovereign Lord. <laughs> I'm about right, okay? So... Um, yeah, so I encourage you to study more on your own. To if, if you want to if you want to discuss more with me, we can do another chat. Or if you want other passages to to interact with, okay, maybe it was a feedback. Anyway, okay, so we'll just leave it with that. I think that was the, the last question. The, the, the last question. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is let's just. I want to go quickly to. Um, We'll come back to Psalm 2 in another a later date. We, we don't have time to really go into there. I, I, Psalm 2 is so deep and powerful. Maybe we'll actually study Psalm 2 later as far as the Lord and, and the Messiah. Um, but let's just go to, let's just go to a, an outline. I prepared just a short outline for you um, so that you can see. So if, if we're looking at we're looking at big picture, how would I preach this? How would I preach this sermon? Okay, I mean, of course, how how number one, how do we pray? How do we pray like the early church? And number two, how how could we preach or teach this sermon? Okay, so I've I've cleared everything off. I've now I've been looking at my I I have my notes somewhere else. But when I'm preparing a sermon, all those notes and observations, I'm going to formulate them into an outline. Okay, so. What, if, if I'm looking at big, big picture here, big picture here, okay, can everyone see that? Is that clear for everyone to see? Um, the, the, if I'm going to just get down to, to what does each line mean? What does each line mean? Really from verse 24 until verse 28, this is just all description of who God is and what he does who God is or what he does. That's really what, what it is. So the, I have the light blue giving a description for God. So what I have here is just uh, major point one, because that's, because that's the main topic. I have description of God in, in my prayer or in my sermon, description of God. And then I identify what each line describes of God. The first line I just, one-to-one, -one. I, I just can't make it better than that, okay? I, I'm trying to keep the theme of God. So I have sovereign, sovereign God, point A. That's the address, okay? Uh, point B, the creator God, okay? And then you can talk about how he's made everything, okay? And then C, I have, I have ordaining God, because if you look at the two, the two big parts, you have the word of God proclaimed, which is Psalm 2, and then you have the word of God and his plan fulfilled, the crucifixion, okay? And so if you're going to summarize those two ideas, it's the ordaining God. Um, he, he declares something will happen, and then it happens, okay? And that's very helpful in asking him to do something for us in the future. If, he can, if, he can, or if, 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 if the power is in God's mouth to speak, and to ordain, okay, then I want to ask him to, to, uh, to fulfill my request, okay? Does that make sense? 
So, so then there's the petition. So then point one is uh, who God is, description of God. Point two, the petition, okay? Within the, the, there's only one request. The request is to boldly declare the word of God. <laughs> so you, you see the theme. I mean, there's, there's a clear theme coming across, okay? And then point number three, the fulfillment of the request. And that's what you see in verse 31. You see the fulfillment of the request. And you actually see God's presence in the earthquake, right? God's presence in the filling of the Holy Spirit, right? And then point number C, the last point is that their prayer is answered. They continue to speak the word with boldness, okay? And so that's how I would, that's how I would structure this for, for, for an outline. Or this is how we could pray. This is how we could pray as well, okay? Ray, do you have a question or a comment? Do you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, just a comment. I, I, I remember the last time you talked about uh, um, raise, uh, that raising a, uh, a verse or a word from God, like the, it's a descriptive and a, what's the, what's the other one? Um, it could be descriptive, it could be like action or? No, no, like when, you, when it's something that it can be repeated and the other one is just a description of something. Oh, like a clarification or a repetition? No, no. Uh, like when you when you pray, uh, you're, you're claiming the word of God. But you said like this. There are scenarios wherein those particular case can no longer be repeated. It says. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Prescriptive yeah. versus descriptive. Descriptive. Okay. Uh, Tim, oh, you you mentioned earlier that in as far as this uh, this particular um, structure is concerned, where will it not be a some the uh, presumptuous of us to make use of a verse of God and claim it as our own, and when 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 does it stop, or when, when we where will you when will you stop using it? Because people, because probably you've heard, I'm sure I've heard. In my case, I've heard uh, uh, teachers or pastors or whoever it is uh, using God's name to claim something and use it. For, for purposes of yeah. making an advancement to their agenda to their agenda yeah something like that no no that's good so so we actually talked about this maybe you remember from from the last meeting we talked about how with the, the petition here was not if you notice here in this prayer the petition was not to remove themselves from the trial Mm -hmm. the, the, the petition was to speak boldly. And, and, and we said the reason why they were asking to speak boldly was because Jesus has just said in the Great Commission, you will be my witnesses, right? In, in mm -hmm. Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the, the end of the earth, right? Yeah. So, so for them to ask to remove from this trial would be to go against the will of Jesus and the will of God, okay? So they're praying, they're praying in, within the context of the will of God. They're praying in line with the will of God. So, so our prayers need to be within line with the will of God. So someone who is just claiming some random blessing. Yeah, um, presumptuous being presumptuous about Presumptuous, yeah, because you don't know if that's the will of God. So, so, um, and we also talked in the Lord's Prayer, right? The pattern, the main pattern, the first the first section is God's agenda, and it's your will be done. And then you, mm. then you pray for your petitions below that. So anyone who's, mm. <laughs> who's praying for, the, new, for the, the, the private jet, maybe their prayer is above the will, <laughs> above the will of God. I don't yeah. know. So, you know, I, I think... That, it's just the way I see it, because there are some pastors or teachers who say, Name it and claim it, or something yeah. like that. You name, you name the verse and you claim it, and it becomes yours. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you that we really have to be careful because, like, so for example, here, Pentecost and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit was this was a great turning point in history that cannot be repeated. So, so for example, them uh, doing these incredible miracles, speaking in 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 amazing tongues, just like that. That was, that was a specific event, and it, that was descriptive in the history of salvation, okay? The, the, the cross is, is, uh, is a one event 
in the history. It'll never be repeated again. The Exodus, one event in, in the salvation history, will never happen again, okay? So someone, it, it, you, just can't, you just can't claim a passage of Scripture or a specific promise, especially from the Old Testament or, or from, that has a specific context. You do have to be careful with that, okay? Now, yeah. now, now if you're really studying the context, there are, we draw from the context, this would be a, a biblical interpretation class, we, we do draw timeless truth, timeless truth from the context, and then those, those timeless truths we can apply to ourselves. So for, okay. for example, one example, okay, one example, um, Old Testament Mosaic law was all about, was all about physical blessing of land, of prosperity, of physical wealth, okay? Now that doesn't mean that, that now for us, we don't have prosperity or wealth, okay? But, but um, in the New Testament, all that physical blessing has been transcended by the incorruptible spiritual heavenly blessing that God has blessed us with in the heavens. Okay. So we still pray the Lord's prayer of our daily needs, but if we're, if we can't claim the promises of, if we keep the law of God, he's going to bless us with this massive land and all these children based upon, let's say Deuteronomy, because, because that was a type we talked about in Hebrews. That was a type for the, for the, spiritual eternal blessing that's given to us in eternity okay so what would be appropriate would be for us to pray about that blessing speaking uh spiritually incorruptibly perfectly in eternity but not this side do, do, do you see what i'm saying so that that would be an appropriate application it would be inappropriate to say you know um, I want to be a king because they, God, God elected kings. David, I want to be like David. You know, this is something else too. What would be inappropriate is uh, this is an example. People use this. They will use David, David's sin, David's great sin, as a grounds for someone to remain in ministry. Oh well, well he was God's anointed one, so he re he remained as the king, and so someone who commits a very grotesque sin in the church. Maybe it's uh, adultery. Maybe it's uh, it's theft. It's, it's it's some serious sin like that. And they say, "Oh well, I'm God's. God has called me to this path." You know, David wasn't removed from from being a king. I should be removed. And we would say, "No, that's you can't. There's no correlation there because David was God's uh, uh, messianic king." <laughs> Until God has a prophet come and pour oil on your head and say you're a Messiah, it doesn't apply to you, <laughs> okay? We have specific qualifications. We have specific qualifications in First Timothy and, and Titus that deal with leadership. It deal with leadership qualifications, deal with uh, disciplining leaders in, in First Timothy 5. So, so you, could not, you could not draw parallels from God's anointed kings. <laughs> If you if you kill someone if, if you if if you uh, if you uh, plotted and killed someone, you should face uh, your penalty. And if you're in a country or in a place where there's capital punishment, you should receive the capital punishment. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, um, anyway, um, th those are those are some those are some things. And there's also things I will say this. There's also things in Jesus's ministry that we should not emulate. There are specific things that he said that we, we should not emulate because of the nature of him being in his uh, humility before he was exalted. So, for example, he tells people not to tell people who he is. <laughs> he can't, when he says, don't tell them who I am, we can't now apply that. That's like, oh, you know, messianic secret. <laughs> Henry's studying that in Mark, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway, um, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, people going for a 40 day fasting. <laughs> you see the, the one that died in Africa, I think. It's crazy. What can I say? I don't know what to say. They're sincere. They're sincere. Maybe they're sincere. We can't judge their hearts, but that would probably be an inappropriate application. Um, like the, even like the, the gouging out the eye. If your eye offends you, cut it out. 
um, Jesus was not was not speaking literally. Um, so, anyway, um, we're we're finished now. We're finished now. Uh, this prayer. So we'll go. What time? What time is it? Beth? Okay, we're gonna start Hannah's prayer, and let's select. Let's first select Psalms for you, and we'll start Hannah's prayer, and then we're gonna pray. And uh, um, if no one is, if is someone bold enough to try to to pray a prayer like this, if not. I, I can just do it, but just before we just think about it, if you want to try, we, we do want to practice praying. So one or two at the end of our, of our, of our meeting, if, if we want to pray, to pray this prayer, um, I'm just saying to think about it at the end. And if not, I, I can do it. So don't, don't feel pressured. Okay. Um, all right, let's go, let's go to the, to the list. Let me get the list out here of uh, Psalm options for us. Okay. So, so I think Ray and Danny already chose one, right? Ray, Ray and Danny already chose one? Mine is number four. Okay. So Danny, you have chosen Psalm, you have Psalm 6. 6, uh, 1 to 10. Okay. And then Danny has, uh, then uh, Ray has chosen number 7, which is Psalm 25. And then um, there are several other options here. Eileen has chosen Psalm 27, 7 to 14. So there's still, can everyone see the list or no? If, if not, I can put it on the screen. Can ever, does everyone have the list there or, or no? Okay, I'm gonna put it on the screen. Just, just bear with me one moment, please. One moment, four, four, four. There we go. Okay, so. The options are Psalm 3, Psalm 4, Psalm 5, Psalm, 5, Psalm 17. Does, who wants to do Psalm 3 or Psalm 4? Psalm 3. Okay, so Henry is great. Henry is Psalm 3. Okay, Bethany is Psalm 4. And then Lolo Dong. Do you want to do Psalm, do you want to do Psalm 5? Uh, truth is, I don't know what to do. Because I was absent for two sessions. Yeah. So we're uh, okay. So, um, we're just doing the same. We're doing the same. You would just be doing the exact same as what we've been doing, where you're just identifying relationships, and then you're just forming some type of of outline, like we did, and then also any type of observations. So it's really flexible. You're just you're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to amplify our understanding of the psalm. So, um, Little Dong hasn't been here. So, I'll just assign Psalm 5 to you, Little Dong. And then, what my plan is for those, if you're uncomfortable, let's schedule a time where we can just meet maybe for half an hour and I can just help. I can help, I can help you in, in a direction with, with the psalm. Okay. For the next meeting, I see, uh, I can uh, prepare for it. Yeah. And then uh, we can discuss thirty minutes before. Okay. But so so little long, and just everyone, just so that we're clear, it's not due next week. It'll be due at maybe in three or four weeks. So you have plenty of time to work on it. Pretty much what I want us to do is, as we work through the Psalms, that this can be something you're working on on your own. Okay. So. Don't feel like you have to rush, okay? All right? Okay. Everyone's try. This is almost like in like a class, in a class setting. If you, if you have like a semester or you're going through, you get an assignment and then you have several weeks until or the end of the semester to do like that. So just think of it like that. It's a project. Each one of us will do. I'll pick a psalm too for myself. So we'll each do a psalm. And um, I think.